million. Emperor. What's the expression? It's not worth the dirt on my shoe. Koto Khan has always bargained with you fairly, you know. Sure, sure. I'm just saying. Upgraded weapons, my intel, and poof. The long outworld civil war. Done. Might be nice to kick back a bit, eh? You know Melina's location. And a whole rebel army. It's gotta be worth at least... 50. I must attack her. Immediately. End this conflict. As you say, it drains us. Right. Do we have a deal? What is it, Devora? The Emperor should not be concerned. Accident ahead. This one will clear it. Make way for Kotal Khan! Move! The Tarkatans are in position. We await your order. It is given. Dearest Tanya. Stopping a carriage is nothing. Killing an emperor. False emperor. Requires power. Power you have, Melina. And won't use. It pains me to use it, Rain. I need more time. The usurper's excursion came too soon. The rain falls when it may. No matter. If Kano does what I paid him to do. Now! Do it! You said a mouthful. But wind and air? Keep your 50 million. Melina's given me twice to take you out. What's up, guys? Seven here back in with the Loser Lounge for more Let's Play Mortal Kombat X. So, in this chapter, we're taking control of Kotokan. More of a beefy character, but he does move a little slow, and I'm not too big on, like, the, the tough, slower characters. I'd rather be, like, a little weaker and faster, because it, it's more like my play style. That, and I don't play Kotal very often, so I do not know any of his moves at all off the top of my head, so, yeah. Uh, during that cutscene, while we were watching, I do remember a few more of the DLC characters. Uh, Tanya and Tremor were one, and also Rain and Bo Um, 
Tanya, I've never, I like, I like her playstyle. That one's actually pretty neat. I remember right now, like, as I'm seeing her again, I believe it was, um, her, like, uh, pole arm configuration. I don't remember the exact name of it, but her pole arm configuration, that one, that was my favorite to use. I just love, like, just hopping on the pole, just smacking people with it, all that good stuff. But as you saw in the cutscene, Melita, absolutely fucking beautiful. Like, god damn. And like, wait till she takes off the veil. You'll see what I mean when she takes it off. So yeah, um, for the most part, that's about it. Um, Kotal, he's new to this, uh, for X. All the other characters are recurring characters, but Kotal was new for this one. Um, and as you can see, after the events of 9, when Shao Kahn died, um, Melina was in charge, but then Kotal took over. And now that's led to him and Melina being at odds because they're trying to fight over who should really be in charge of it after Shao Kahn's death. I believe it goes more... It actually goes more in depth with his history with Shao Kahn in Eleven. Because their whole like time travel thing they got going on in that game. So if we do end up doing that, I'd be glad to explain more into that. Uh, in this game, we do have um, X-rays. However, we don't have any fatalities to do in the story, except for one, which I believe after. But anyway, that's about it for our first fight. So let's keep on going with Kotal Khan. You're not worth the dirt on my shoe. I'm pleased you remember me, Koata. I will never forget those who freed Melina. She vowed to create a free Edinia, something you refused to do. A united outworld stands strong against its enemies. It will never be united under your rule. <laughs> Your rebellion is all that prevents it. Oh, we do actually get to fight Tanya. I don't know why I forgot that. I literally played this like last weekend, so I don't remember why I forgot. Um, however, she's not using the configuration I was just talking about, so I don't care about this version of her. Um, what oh, we also um I was saying we have X-rays. No. Yeah, no, it's called X-rays in this game because we zoom in on their parts, we hit them. It does um, work a little bit differently than it does in 11, though. Instead, are, do they go by a different name? I think they might. I just don't remember off the top of my head. But they do build up a little bit differently. You can only really... So with this game, like, we have meters, and we can only do the x-rays when that meter is full. However, in 11, to get that move, we have to be down to our last, I believe, 20 to 30% of health, and we can only do it that once. So like each round when you get to it, like if it's down, it's down, you can't do it again. Uh, but it kind of works out the same anyway. Because if I build up my meter, since I already use it once, I can build up about like halfway from the remainder of this fight, if I'm lucky. And then I won't be able to use it again until the next round where I build it up all the way. So they kind of still work the same in terms of balancing. So that's not a big issue. And I got really close to being taken out there by Tanya, but thankfully was in the clutch. And I should feel the need to mention, like, this game is, I'm playing it on medium, um, so, it's around, like, chapter, like, three and four that is like, alright, I, I can't beat them in, like, one sitting, to where it takes me about multiple attempts to do it, and, as you can see, this is a kind of short video, so, I cut all that out, so, you'll only be seeing the good attempts, because I do not want to sit here and watch all my failures over and over again, remember how badly I am at this game, and I really bet you guys don't want to see it. I tried to record this game, um, with commentary, like live commentary, but I wasn't able to do it through PC, so, still we're gonna have to work on fixing that, so instead, just another post commentary, um, playthrough for you guys. But now that time is out, let's go to the next fight. You are a fool to trust Melina. Yeah. 
She tasks me for the last time. Melina. Kano was to kill you, miserable snake. Rubro Nate! <laughs> Another Adenian, the supposed half god. Kogakir! I am a son of Argus. I was not merely declared a god by befuddled commoners, Bulak. Surely Melina suspects your true intentions, son of Argus. <laughs> Alright, so here's yet another DLC, uh, DLC character, Rain. Um, I honestly, I'm not too familiar with his backstory. I believe, like like he said, son of Argus, so I think he's like one of the two brothers. No, he's definitely not. He's not one of the two brothers from um, Armageddon. Or was it Armageddon? No. I think, I can't remember anymore. There's one Mortal Kombat game where you're in control of one of the two brothers sent from, you know, um, oh my god, it's hard trying to explain it when I don't fully remember it myself, I think it really was Armageddon, because you're playing as one of these brothers, his name Argon, or Tar, I don't, oh, this is going to bother me, so I'm probably going to look it up and I'll be able to tell you it in the next video, but you're playing as one of these two characters, I don't think this is him, um, he is one of, like, the more, like, older characters because I know like um I know in the beginning like his design was really simplistic because back in like the early early days of Mortal Kombat there was like so many different ninjas but they were all different there was like Scorpion, Sub-Zero who was this blue scorpion, Reptile who was green scorpion, Rain who was this purple scorpion and then Smoke who was black scorpion and they were like actually no that was a uh, new sidebot that was black scorpion it was just literally like all these ninjas, they looked exactly the same, but they're all different characters until they got flushed out and made different, got like different designs and everything. Um, oh, I've been rambling this whole time. Anyway, uh, that's it for Kodos chapter, so I'll see you guys in the next one. That should silence you. You won't touch him again. But I will. As the heir to my father, Shao Kahn, I, Melina, Kahnam of Outworld, order your execution. Well, that's embarrassing. Apparently, we do have one more. So I think Melina's the last one. I don't know why I thought there was still more. But anyway, I guess I can continue what I was talking about. Um, so yeah, like all these characters look exactly the same, and it was hard to tell them apart until they got their designs fleshed out in further iterations of those games as they came out. But here, here is Bay. Oh my gosh, she looks so freaking sexy in this outfit. Like not even the outfit, just her face too. I I don't know why. That's always been a thing for Melina. It's like everything is sexy as hell, but her face. But in this one. It makes a bit more sense when you see the veil she takes it off. Because I don't know why, but for some reason they decided to tweak her mouth. Because normally how it's all tar cotton, this time it's like only the sides are, and then like in the center she actually has like lips. So it makes sense of how she can actually talk and like eat and shit, you know? I don't know why they did it. Honestly, I liked it. Um, I do actually have her pop figure of this particular version of Melina and I love it so much. Unfortunately, I did not bring it with me to Louisiana when I moved out here, but um, I feel I can like prop. No, nah, I'm not going to put a picture of it. You guys, uh, if you want to look at it, it's um, I got it from GameStop's website. It was like really cheap. It was only like $11, how most pop figures are. And it was like a pre-order too, so it was like brand new coming out, so I really like it. 
I don't know if they ever ended up making more of them, but if there are, I might get some more. But with that, now it's the end of the video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode of Let's Play More Combat X. There will be an execution this day. You will atone for your descent, Melina. Your blood will make right. Up the stair path. To the fire's edge. <laughs> A mere cub, grown to be a jaguar. <laughs>